I have been wanting to make this video for a really long time with my husband because I'm a huge fan of Bridgerton. If you're also a huge fan of Bridgerton, do comment down below. Considering that this season was all about the Viscount meeting his Viscountess, this is the video I've been dying to make. I have so many questions for my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just admit something? Oh dear. I don't think I know what Bridgerton is. Well, you, yes, okay, that's incorrect. You do know what it is, but well, you've I, never watched it. I've never watched it. I tell you, you what, I watched that? one little bit of it and I saw the costumes and the furniture and the kind of ostentation and I thought, hang on a second, that's not the life of a Viscount and Viscountess, even then. So I think there was a little bit well, of license of course. Do you think? They had to embellish it. It's they TV for it. crying out okay. loud. Right? Okay. But we were all glued to our TV. I know, Whoever but made Downton it, Abbey, good TV. Downton Abbey was quite realistic in its depictions. Yeah, but whereas, whereas this Bridgerton is more, it's more fantasy. very over the top fantasy. Yeah. Okay. Well, we, and that's I, a good thing. Do you know thing. what? I think coming out of the past couple of years, I think we all need a little bit of fantasy. So, one of the things that, of course, I loved about this season was that it revolved around the Viscount meeting his Viscountess because when I first came to this country, number one, I actually did not know what a Viscount or Viscountess was and I didn't know how to pronounce it the right way. She, she thought it was a discount. <laughs> discount. She, she, thought, she thought with discount. me, no, with me she got a discount. In fact, you had. I'm, I'm discounted in all sorts the of ways. Discounted, viscounted, viscountess. There you go. So, so, but it's true. I didn't know how to pronounce it the right way. So I was actually quite pleased that Bridgerton decided to make this season all about viscount and viscountess and getting obviously the pronunciation, um, letting the world know. Well, maybe everybody else knew that it was pronounced that way. I certainly did it. Did so, it. so, if, so if, if Bridgerton isn't terribly authentic and it's a bit of a fantasy, you're actually the real deal. I am. You are well, an American Viscountess. I, I am. And Is that I actually right? have a YouTube channel called American Viscountess. Yes. So, but you are the real Viscount because you are a British Viscount. <laughs> that's true. I don't know whether being British makes it, makes it more real or authentic, but maybe, maybe that's right. Maybe. There are quite a few Americans who've married into the aristocracy over the generations. Mm -hmm. So there have been quite a few American duchesses, countesses and Viscountesses. That's true. That right? I mean, not that... that many. Come on. Let okay. me have my moment I, here. Well, I think at the moment, <laughs> Julie is the only American Viscountess. In this so, whole country. So move over Bridgerton. This is the real deal. That's oh, thank you, um, thank you, thank you. So it's, he's way too kind. But speaking of Bridgerton, what I think I wanted to do today is to discuss the differences between that Viscount and Viscountess Bridgerton world and our the real world of a real life American Viscountess and. Viscount. So we're going to talk about royals, royals, parties, parties, staff, staff, work, jobs, work. work. Yep. And the last one is titles. Titles. Okay. Mm -hmm. What a mix. Yes. Let's do it. So Go. I think I'm going to start with actually titles because we've just been t discussing titles. Do we really use our titles? Because in Bridgerton, they're using their titles all of the time. When they're introduced, it's all about their titles. Lord and Lady, Lord and Lady, Viscount, Viscountess, Duke, Duchess. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with so, our title is it's incredibly long. It is. I mean, I haven't actually counted all the letters in Viscountess, Hinching, Brook, Brooke. but there's a lot of them. Yes. Somebody could probably count that for me. Maybe it's... There's a lot 50. of letters. No. No. 30. 30, probably. 30 characters. We should actually count you know that. It doesn't fit on a card. You fill out a form, it's got all those little boxes you've got to fill in, and you've got no chance of getting the whole thing on there. That's no. one of the reasons we don't use the titles, because but, it's a bit of a pain. Well, it is, but also I just think, you know, times have changed, and we're, as we go through the next four points, you'll see why we pretty much go by... Luke and Julie. <laughs> it is It is Luke and Julie. On our passports, or at least on my passport, because in Britain they include titles, it does have my full name, Viscount Luke Timothy Charles Hinchingbrook. Hinchingbrook. But it also has a little note saying the holder of this passport is Luke Timothy Charles Montague, Viscount Hinchingbrook. 
That's complicated, isn't it? So I'm Hinchingbrook and I'm Montague. I can never really remember who I am. As for Julie, unfortunately, she can only ever be Montague because she's got an American passport mm -hmm. and Americans don't recognize titles. titles. So even if you wanted your title in your passport, you'd have to become a Brit. That's Julie, right. Julie, what do you feel about becoming a Brit? <laughs> Yes, let's talk about that one we'll later. We'll talk about that one we'll later. We'll talk about in that one later. In the meantime, because it's not in the passport, maybe she's not such a real Viscountess after all. No, 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 no. no. Passport schmash sports. <laughs> passport schmash sport. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, so, have we given enough away about titles? I mean, the only time that I know Julie uses a title is very occasionally she'll say to me, Luke, I really want to go to this quite smart restaurant no, and I'm not sure they're not going true. to let me in. And she says, how about if I just ring them up and say it's Viscountess Hinchingbrook? And you know what? I'm afraid that, that sometimes works. She's okay. only done it a couple of times, but I think we can let people into a secret that occasionally getting a table at a booked out restaurant, it can be helpful. I'm going to just stay mum on that one. Okay. <laughs> She's not going to comment on that one. Okay. Otherwise, um... I think if we had like a really short title, like it was Viscount and Viscountess Brooke without the yeah. pinching bit. Maybe. We might use it a bit more. I don't know. Maybe. No. Okay. I'm not sure. I mean, I do like my title because um, I like American Viscountess. She gets and, into restaurants. And no, that's not true. But I do, th I just, I think we're very down to earth as we should be. And we just like Luke and Julie. It is Luke and Julie. Yeah. yeah. So let's move on to number two. Number two. Number okay. two is the big one. Royals, royals, royals. The biggest question I think um, I get asked, I say uh, quite often, especially when I married into this family, was um, have I met any royals? Do I socialize with royals? Are we going to be invited to any of the parties for the Queen's Jubilee? Uh, and so on and so forth. Um, and the answer is no. So unlike all of the, well, unlike the Viscount and Viscountess who seem to, you know, in one sense, have parties with the Queen uh, in Bridgerton, we've never met the Queen. No, I think you're, and... it's, it's completely right these days. It is much more of a meritocracy. You know, if you're a top footballer or a top athlete or you've done something amazing in your community, you're going to be invited to garden parties. You're going to mm. be given uh orders of merit yes um and unless you unless you've grown up close to any of the royal family um you're not simply going to be part of the court circle just because you have a title, title. it is an interesting question though as to whether when there is the next coronation whether peers get invited because historically well, peers have been invited can to, you explain what a peer is well, because a peer, i think a, peer a lot of people is, i didn't is, know what it was <laughs> A peer is, is a peer of the realm, so that's a, uh, a, a lord, a lady, a viscount, an earl, um, a duke, a duchess. Um, uh, these are the peers of the realm. So these are, that's the word, the generic word used for aristocrats. And historically, they formed the court and would have been very close, as indeed my forebears were, to the monarch of the time. So back in the turn of the previous century, so in the kind of early 1900s, um, my ancestor, the Earl of Sandwich, at that point was very close to Edward VII, mm -hmm. who was the son of Queen Victoria. Yep. And in fact, um, my father and uh, aunt, who remember growing up at Hinchingbrook, a lot of their time at Hinchingbrook would be spent socialising with royals, members of the royal family who live nearby. Mm -hmm. But that hasn't really continued. I know that my grandfather's um, godmother was Queen Alexandra, for exactly. example. So, um, so do we socialise with the royals today? No, we don't. No, it pretty um, much stopped with your we, grandfather. Have so. we had any royal visits? Yes, we have. Yes. We, we did have Princess Anne who flew in on a helicopter and came and met everybody here. And that was probably about 20 years ago. Yes. Um, and, um, but other than that, I think the answer is that mostly we don't have much interaction. No. However, before I move on to point number three, I will be covering the part of the Jubilee weekend. So the Platinum Jubilee is coming up and I will be in uh, the press quarters at Buckingham Palace on Saturday, 
the 4th of June, and I'm really excited about that. I've got my accreditation, and I'll be on Sky News for the breakfast show. I'm the guest presenter that day, so I will be on for the full three hours from 7 a.m. till 10 a.m. So UK will, time. you will be commenting on the royal family, yes. if not socializing yeah. with them. I commentate on them. I don't socialize with them. Okay, number three is staff. So in Bridgerton, I was trying to explain to Luke that there is, you know, there's quite a lot of staff there. Yeah, and as there would it be. Exactly. And here... <laughs> <laughs> well, let me, do, let me just try and understand. So, so in Bridgerton, you've got a lot of household stuff. One of the lovely yeah. things about Downtown Abbey is it's got both the upstairs and the downstairs. So it's got the storylines amongst the aristocrats themselves, and then it's got the storylines within the staff and both of those are kind of interplaying and working. Is, that, is it the same in Bridgerton? Well, it's not so much, you're not so much having the stories of the staff yet. I mean, who knows what will happen in the yeah. later seasons, but there are, of course, um, you know, uh, there is a sort of household staff, you know, hair, curling hair, brushing hair. Brushing hair, a lot helping of wigs. To helping to put on um, clothes. Um, right. You know, your fancy wigs? dress. Are the, are the men wearing wigs? Are we sort of George well, the Third uh, time? What, what yeah, so sort of at, late Regency? So I think at some of the Bridgerton big parties, which we're going to get on to, um, there, uh, there have been some wigs, yes. Yeah. So, so staff, well, I think when my father remembers living at Hinchingbrook um, before the war, in fact, he was born during the war, but before the war at Hinchingbrook, I think there were between 20 and 30 indoor staff. There mm -hmm. were butlers, well, there was, a, there was the butler, there were the, the footman, there was the housekeeper, there were maids, scullery maids, cooks, undercooks. I mean, it was, it was a full retinue. After the war, I think they went down from something like 20 to something like three or three, four. Three or I four, remember, yes, yes. I remember when my, grandmother, my grandfather was living here, he probably had three, so he, wow. he brought all three with him just for one person. He had a butler, housekeeper, a cook, and probably a maid as well. And, um, and these days, we don't really have any at all, except we have help in the house from Beryl, who is the housekeeper who looks after the house. Yeah, so and she looks have... after the house and makes sure, because we're not here all of the time, and make sure that it's obviously secure and looked after, and you have to have but, that. But these are not staff serving us these are not staff dressing us no <laughs> um, brushing our hair obviously. julie sometimes brushes my hair <laughs> <laughs> sometimes in past videos i look at him and think his hair needs a good brush yeah, yeah. and yeah. what's happened to it yeah so we and but also to the point we are very hands-on and that kind of leads me to the next uh i guess uh, point or number four is work jobs so in Jobs. Bridgerton, yes. you know, they're being well looked after. They're not really, you know, having to do so much apart from look very um, perfect. Yeah. And we are, no. So, 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 so traditionally in the aristocracy, it was rather frowned upon to work. Isn't that an extraordinary thing? So the idea that you yeah. had a trade or that you were in a profession that was beneath members of the aristocracy. Members of the aristocracy were uh, expected to be landowners, so they were expected to be good managers of their estates, um, look after their tenants, but there was a lot of leisure traditionally. I still know one or two aristocrats who have quite a lot of leisure, um, but, but <laughs> that's, that is not us. So No, we are very so. hands-on, and in fact, tomorrow I am pulling um, all of that carpet out of Keeper's Cottage. I mean, I will be yeah. on my hands and knees pulling the carpet out. I mean, you we know, don't want to make ourselves look too good because, you know, we do have a good time here. Um, not it's a all, lot of hard work. Not all of the time is spent pulling carpets no. and fixing plumbing, but quite a lot is, Yes, as it were. Uh, it, well, it is. I we mean, fix a lot of leaks here, Luke, let's be honest. That's true. In fact, there was a leak right up above my head yeah. here the other day, which we were running around the house to, to try and repair. So, um, so, and I've always had a full-time job, you know, normal career, Same with leaving me. university, strong work ethic, 
in fact, this is something we're really trying to pass on to yeah, our children I worked through, as well. We're all for pregnancies, all children. I've never and the kids are all amazingly worked. working hard. Have got yeah. great jobs, you know, working in bars, waitressing. We've even got a child who's delivering food on a bike. Yep. How about that? That's right. We won't say with delivery service because I don't think we. No, we can't do that. But 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 there we go. So that I think tells you about the modern aristocratic work work life. Life. It's everything. Exactly. So now, last point, number five, and I think this is probably the one that maybe everybody's been waiting for: parties. So in Bridgerton, they have just these, you know, over the top, wonderful looking, I would like to participate parties with the best. I mean, let's all admit the music, the soundtrack of Bridgerton is incredible. Um, And it's, you know, you, you do want to be a part of it and the dress that they wear and it's... Are you you wanting to be kind of swept up by a prince and taken onto the dance floor and twirled around? Yes. Yes, oh dear. dear. So yeah. you haven't done that we haven't, yet. We haven't had any big, big parties here um, for a while, but we did have a pretty big party here back in the nineties. That seems a long, <laughs> a long time, time ago, ago, doesn't it? That's the last time. Um, we've but had a we big had party. we had a ball, and it was called Mapperton the Ghoul Ball. Right. Or was it called that? Oh anyway, dear. It was anyway, a ball. it was a ball. It was called Asterix the Ghoul Ball at Mapton. There you go. Okay, and how and, many people and came to that? People won't have heard of Asterix, but Asterix is a is a um, Belgian comic book which describes the life of a young Gaul in the time of the Romans, and all he likes doing is fighting and feasting. There wasn't much fighting, but there was a, a lot, lot of, of feasting. feasting. I think we had about 600 people. We had an enormous tent over the fountain court down in the garden. We had wild boar on the spit, which I remember wasn't cooked well enough. Ooh. So no one could eat it. Oh dear. So instead of that, they picked it up and threw it. Actually, there was fighting. That was the fighting. Oh dear. Um, and that's, that's a grand asterisk tradition. At the end of every asterisk, there's a big fight. Right. A big feast. So, um, so that was the last one. It was quite glamorous. There were quite a few glamorous people here. I'm not going to say who they were. but No, there were can't a few, do that. There were a few glamorous people. So that was in and the we 90s. Had, and, we, and we had a glamorous um, rock band playing as well. No, then Julie's, Julie's going to say, hang on a second, that's been 2020. So three years or something. So we've, let me just put this um, out there. We've, 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 only, we've had other black no, but we've, parties we've here. Only... We had one the other day for one of our children. So, okay, yes, for a 21st, yeah. of course. Yeah, but 21st. We've, we've got, we've only... got another okay. glamorous dinner for another something? child coming up. Okay. I mean, so... you know, there's endless parties here. I don't know what Julie's talking about. It's just They're like for Bridgerton. our children. It's just like Bridgerton. Luke and I really only started taking over the running of the estate just well over five years ago. And I don't think that there's been much time for us to have big parties. I keep saying to Luke, I really want to have a party like the one that you had in the 90s. Please, can we do it? And, and I think Luke, we want Luke to do it. Luke keeps saying there's another roof to mend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so we'd like to, to one yeah. day, but we've, we've got a lot of work to do to ensure that the repairs are done, that the building restorations are yes. done. There are other priorities. Before other having. Part. I know that sounds really boring, but I'm afraid I know. there are other priorities and at, I agree. At, at the moment. There but, are, but hopefully one day. Hopefully one day we can have another. Do you think we could have... 600 person party? I don't know if I know 600 I think we can people, have Asterix the Ghoul Ball Part 2. Okay, well, there you go. He's committing to it right now on film, so I'm going to hold him to it. How many I, years? How many years away are we from it? I'm going to, I mean, I might as well, uh, a, a few. few. A it few. translates to about three or four. More oh. than that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this uh, Matt Britton Live make, Extra. Make sure that you have subscribed. 63% of people watching this video have not subscribed. It always amazes me. Why wouldn't you? You just got to press the button and it goes ding. And, it goes, and so that you and can be the ding. first to and know. And if you want to be a patron, patrons are hugely important to Mapperton. They provide a source of income to support all the repairs and maintenance that we do here. And in particular, special projects like the restoration of the 18th century pool and the new project that we have uh, restoring Three keep us cottage and turning that into something that can generate income to support the estate, which Julie is now in charge of, Mm -hmm. please head over to patreon.com forward slash Mapperton Live. 
Thank you, everybody. Thanks very much.